Chapter 4, Polynomial Equations and Inequalities, and today solving polynomial equations. So welcome back to Chapter 4. Um, before I get started, I'd just like to thank you for watching my channel, and also I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. I noticed that um, from my lovely analytics that uh, YouTube provides me with it. Only about one third of the people who are watching are actually subscribers. If you subscribe, then of course you know when I've posted the next video. So let's get right to work here, solving some polynomial equations. This isn't really anything um, spectacularly new for you in your understanding of solving equations because you've solved a lot of quadratic equations. So now all we're doing is looking at <clears throat> equations that have higher degrees. And because we've already done some work in the previous chapter on how to factor um, cubic and quartic functions using the factor theorem and the remainder theorem, you should be pretty good at doing this by now using synthetic or long division. So um, when we solve a polynomial function, we're solving it when f at x is equal to zero. And what this means is that if your equation is not set equal to zero, then you need to move everything to one side of the equation so that you can have this little happy zero face. And then you will be finding the zeros of the polynomial. So that's really the important thing to remember to do. Because sometimes people see equations and they go, oh, what am I supposed to do with this? And when you see it set like this equation over here, you would know right away that... Um, this is set to zero, you're solving what makes, what value of x put into this equation will give me zero for an answer. And of course, those are the zeros of your function. So let's take a look at uh, 3a here. Now, in this part, we're just solving equations, not inequalities. That's the next little thing we're going to look at. And the first thing you're doing here is you're trying to solve this equation. So I want to set this equation and I'll write it out again just so that it makes me more comfortable knowing that it's not y, but oops, pushing too hard. So excited to get going on this lesson. So I've set it equal to zero. And if you recall from the previous lesson, you need to find the factors of 42 and something needs to make this equal to zero. Now, the sad st story is that not everything is factorable. So you might go through all the factors, not in this case, but you might go through all the factors only to find out that nothing makes this equal to zero, in which case you're going to be very sad. So let's say we'll do f at 1 and see what happens. So we put in 1 and we would get 2 minus 17 plus 23 plus 42. That's f at 1, this function at the value for 1. And you can see that that's um, 44 minus 23 and 1 is um, 30. I don't, sorry, what am I doing here? 45, and it's not 0 anyway. So f at 1 is not equal to 0. So that's like scratch that one off your list. So then you might want to try f at minus 1. There's no point in going to really high numbers. Now, you know all the factors of 42, so you would have 1, 2, 3, <coughs> 6, 7, and then the plus and minuses of those. So I'm going to try minus 1 here. So minus 1 here is going to give me minus 2, minus 17, and then um, minus 1 is minus 23, and plus 42. And you should be able to see that this, all these negative ones here are negative 42 plus 42 is 0. So that means that x plus 1 is a factor. It's a factor of this polynomial. And when, when this function, when x is equal to negative 1, that would be one of the roots. So when I do my synthetic division, remember you use the root. If I'm running out of the paper here for you. So you put the minus 1 there. You make your upside down division sign. And you put in all the numbers. So I have 2 minus 17 plus 23 and plus 42. I bring down the first number. 
which is 2, I multiply it by minus 1. I add these together, multiply by minus 1, this times minus 1, I add them together. I multiply this by minus 1, and I get 0. Now you know that if you don't get a 0 here, then either you made a mistake in the calculation here or here, and then you go back and fix it. Okay, so I know that minus 1 is a factor, or sorry, x plus 1 is a factor, minus 1 is a 0, and now I know that what I have left here is I have 2x squared minus 19x plus 42 is equal to 0. So that's what this gives me, right? So now I need to factor this. Now, if you haven't, um, if you have trouble with factoring, um, you should go back and take a look at some of the practice in uh, functions 11. So that's my first um, set of lessons that I did. And 2.3, there's three or four different videos talking about the different types of factoring, if you need to review that. Okay, so let's go down here and again, we're going to factor this, so we're looking for a product of the first and the last. So the first and the last here would be 84. Let me see if I can add another little more light here. So product of 84, and I have a sum of minus 19. So now think about all the numbers that multiply to, to 84 and add to 19. So let me try this. There we go, a little more light here. Okay, so product of 84, sum of 19. Um, how about, um, mm, let's see, 19, minus 19. Sum of minus 19 and a product of 84. So what works, guys? Help me out, help me, Miranda. I know it's doable. Um, 12 and 7, right? Okay, minus 12 times minus 7 would give me 84. And minus 12 plus minus 7 would give me negative 19. So those are my two magic numbers. I write them out again. And the easiest way to factor now is to put the coefficient of x squared underneath each and reduce your fractions. So that's going to give me minus six over one, and this one is done. So this factor is to be x minus six times two x minus seven. And my other factor, well, that's just that one. Okay, so if they asked you just to solve it, you'd say, well, that means that x is equal to negative one what makes this bracket zero? You would say six. What makes this bracket zero? And that would be seven halves. So that means that this equation right up here, this is the same thing as x minus, x plus one, sorry, x plus one times x minus six times two x minus seven. So that's another way of writing the fact, of writing out this equation writing it in factored form. Okay, so another thing you might have to factor would be something like this. It's another cubic function. Now, what you should always look for first <coughs> is to see whether or not this can be factored by grouping. Now this one you can see, there's, there's no factors, no way you could factor this as a group. But this one, if you look at these two and these two, and you pull out a common factor here. So that would be what we could take out a 4x squared, right? 4x squared, and I'm left with an x minus three. And this looks kind of like that, but it will if I take out a negative one. So that's just to make sure that you don't waste a lot of time trying to factor these things when it's just as simple as doing that. Okay, so if I wanted to solve that, I would say x is equal to, um, sorry, I would have had 4x squared is equal to, 4x squared is equal to 1, x squared is equal to 1 quarter, so x is equal to plus or minus 1 half, 
and this one would be x is equal to 3. Okay, so don't make your life difficult by doing a long factoring like this when it could be factored by grouping. So always check. Okay, let's move over to another question. These are questions from the homework because the textbook, um, I think it's very wise if you read the examples in the textbook rather than me just writing them down here for you. So this time I chose to spend a little more time doing some of the homework questions so that will help you um, get through some of your exercises. <coughs> okay, so here's another example of something that's not set equal to zero, right? So this, in order for me to use the uh, factoring, we need to bring this to the other side of the equation. So that should be your first step. Um, it could be more than just one number over there. Sometimes in some word problems, you're asked to find when something is equal to something. You did that in your grade 11 course as well. So you set them equal to each other and now solve. So this one is kind of nasty. I mean, we've got all kinds of numbers here. And we want to find something that is a factor of minus 40 that could make this equal to zero. So I have a little insider scoop here, and we're going to check F at 2. Don't you wish you had insider scoop on your tests? So 2 to the power 4 is 16 times 4 is 64, uh, minus 32 um, to 4, minus 204, plus 2 times 106 is 212, minus 40. And I believe, believe, believe that is equal to zero. So we have 212, 276 in our sums, 276, and 236 minus 276 in our minuses. So f at 2 is equal to zero. So now what you have to do, again, is to use some synthetic division. This is the easiest way to do it, guys. So I write my 2 here write this out and I write in all the numbers, the coefficients of all these and the 40. Okay, so I'm going to put in 4 minus 4 minus 51 plus 106 minus 40. And if I'm right, then like I said, this is going to be equal to zero, the last term here. So I have 8. I'm multiplying here again. Remember 2 times 4 is 8. I add them together gives me another 4. Um, 4 times 2 is 8. I add those together. I get minus 43. Times 2 again is minus 86. I add them up. I get plus 20. And 2 times 20 is 40. I add them up and I get 0. Again, if you don't get a 0, you've made a mistake. So this means now that I have 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 43x plus 20 equals 0. Okay, so I'm not quite sure what the question asked for you, number 7. Let me just check it here in your textbook. Determine the roots algebraically by factoring. Okay, so now I have this, and I have to go through the same process again, finding factors of 20 that might make this equal to 0. So, um... I gain a little insider information so we don't spend the whole time doing a bunch of practice runs. F at minus 4 is going to work here. Um, do I need to write it all out? F at minus 4 is equal to 0. You can do the checking on that. I don't want to waste the time doing that. So again, you have to do your long division. So you put in your minus 4. You plug in the numbers from this one. So I have 4, 4, 43, minus 43, and 20. Bring down the 4, that's minus 16, uh, sorry, minus 16, add them up, minus 12, that's minus 16, minus 12, that gives me 48, add it together gives me 5, minus 20 gives me that fancy 0 again. So now I have 4x squared minus 12x plus 5 is equal to 0. 
and now it's a quadratic so I can use my basic factoring skills what multiplies to 20 and adds to negative 12 product minus 20 sum negative 12 um, 12 and product of minus 20 hmm. 2 and 12 right or minus 2 minus 12 it's a product of plus 20 it's got me confused there 4 and 5 so minus 2 and minus 10 multiply to 20 and add to minus 12 and again I put them over the coefficient of x squared so the first number here and I reduce so that gives me minus 1 over 2 minus 5 over 2 so now that I've got this all factored I can say what this equation is in factored form I think this one just asks you to determine the roots so you would say you had one here, which was 2 minus 4. So I'm going to write roots are 2 minus 4. And this would be um, minus a half and minus 5 halves. Because remember, if you were to write this in here now, you'd say um, 2x, 2x minus 1. And this is 2x minus 5 equals 0. Set this equal to 0. That gives you plus. So plus 1 half plus 5 halves. The opposite sign of these ones. And that gives you all of the factors. So we've solved it wonderfully. Boom, boom, done. Okay, number 9d. So this is another example where things are on the other side of the equation, which means you need to bring them all to one side, set it to zero. So let's do this again. 6x cubed, 10x squared, minus, um, I'm going to bring this over first, minus x squared plus 2x is equal to zero. So that gives me x to the fourth minus 6x cubed. Now sometimes you can do this on a graphing calculator if your teacher lets you. And um, and I had a minus 2x here too. So those cancelled out. Okay, so now what am I going to do? I've got these x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 9x squared equals 0. So I, I don't have a constant, but I do have a nice common factor here. So that would be x squared. Right? And look, it's going to leave me with a nice simple easy to factor trinomial perfect square actually so this is going to be x minus 3 so x squared times x minus 3 squared is equal to 0 and x is equal to don't forget this one would be 0 right this is 0 and this one is 3 okay so the last question i'm going to do with you is my favorite one because has a really funny name. I don't know who makes up the names for questions in the textbook, but they must have had fun making this one up. And it's a company, uh, a family called the Sickalicti family members are very competitive card players. They keep score using a complicated system that incorporates positives and negatives. Maya's score for the last game night could be modeled by this function, which is this one here. So it says x is less than 10, which means they only played nine games. And x is an element of w, that's whole numbers. So that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You couldn't play half a game. They played all full games. So question A says, after which game was my score equal to 0? Well, that's your easiest question to answer because you're just wanting to know what are the zeros of this function. So they are 0, 4, and 6. This one is irrelevant to the solution because you don't say, well, before they started, she um, she had a score of 0. Well, everyone did. So she had a score of 0 after the fourth game and the sixth game. Question B says, after which game was her score minus 5? So this time you need to set the score to minus 5. Five. This is the score at game at some game number. 
So in order for you to solve this, you're going to have to expand it and simplify. All right, so I need to, um, I need to expand this question. So this is x squared minus 6x minus 4x. So x squared minus 10x plus 24 equals negative 5. So I've just expanded this. And now I'm going to multiply by an x. And I'm going to bring the 5 over to the other side equals 0. Okay, so when was her score minus 5? Well, you might want to guess that it was probably sometime between um, game four and six. And the only, well, you could try one, because the only factors of five are one and five. You put in one, you're going to get one minus 10, that's minus nine, plus 29, that's 20. So that's not zero. So F at five. Let's try F at five. So five cubed is 125. 5 squared is 25 times minus 10 is minus 250. 5 times 24 is 120 and plus 5. So you can see I have 125, 125, that's 250 minus 250 is 0. So that means after game 5. Well, or at game, after the fifth game, her score was minus five. So that's your B part. And C, when was it equal to 16? Well, then you're going to have to do one more calculation here. So you're going to set this equal to 16. I'm going to let you finish that. It's not difficult now. So you should be able to set it to 16 and again solve for, um, solve for X. Now the last part of this says draw a sketch of the graph of f of s at x if x is an element of real numbers and why is this not a good model to represent Maya's score during the game night and the reason for that is because it shows um, game values when you do real numbers so I'll give you a quick sketch of what it, it should look like so it started real numbers. It started at zero, and she her score kind of goes like this, right? And this essentially goes on forever if it's if x is an element of real numbers, we should be able to put in negative and positive values, which doesn't make sense for Maya's game because they can only be whole numbers. Okay, so that would be the reason. So that's a little introduction to chapter four. Um, like I said, I just wanted to do some examples for you rather than, because there's really nothing new here, right? We've already learned this in chapter three. So don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day. Bye for now.